So we looked last video at comparing the two types of protein, or excuse me, the two, <laughs> two levels of protein, high and low, as well as a protein source, beef, pork, or cereal, and their combined effect as well as their interaction on the weight gain in rats. So those data are in the protein and weight gain data set that are available on e ELC. So again, we have the source, beef, cereal, and pork, the level high or low, and there are six total combinations. So you could be high or low beef, high or low cereal, or high or low pork. And then we have the weight gain measured in grams. There were 10 rats assigned to each of those six possible diets. What we want to do is we're going to conduct first a two-way ANOVA, and I'm going to review how to do that in JUMP right now. To do a two-way ANOVA in JUMP, we go to Analyze, Fit, uh, excuse me, Analyze, Fit Model. The response must be quantitative, and to be sure that it's quantitative in JUMP, it's going to have the blue symbol, the scale, next to it. And that is our weight gain variable, and that goes in the Y box. So our response is always Y. To do a two-way ANOVA, including an interaction term, we're going to select both of our variables. So that would be source and weight gain, or excuse me, source and level. And we want to include them in our model effects box. And if I were to just hit add right now, I would not have my interaction term. I would just have my main effects. So to get my interaction as well as my main effects, I select both my variables, both my categorical explanatory variables, and then I come down to the macros button. And when I select macros, I want to hit full factorial. Now what the full factorial does is it includes all possible main effects as well as all possible interactions. When I only have two categorical variables, there are only two possible main effects, one for the source, one for the level of protein, and then there's only one possible interaction, and that's the interaction between source and level. Now I've specified my model, the one that has all main effects and interactions. I've specified my response, and I can hit run. Now, what I care about are things like the ANOVA table, so my analysis of variance table, which has an F ratio of 4.3 and a p-value of 0 0.0023. So this overall model that has two explanatory variables and an interaction term explains 4.3 times as much variability in weight gain as it leaves unexplained. And we can see that based on the mean squares. The mean squared for the model is 922, and the mean squared error is 214, which gives us a ratio of 4.3. If there were no relationship at all between the protein source, the uh, protein level, or the interaction, and of course, if there were no interaction. So if all three of those things were true, then we would um, get an F value like this or bigger only about 0.2% uh, of the time. So this is a pretty unusual result if the model were not useful. The next thing we want to do then, because we have a useful, uh, we have evidence, strong evidence of a useful overall model, is look at the interaction term first. Because that interaction term is what tells us whether we should look at those levels of protein or those sources of protein separately, or if it would be okay to average over them. And this is what the last video was. So we looked at the source by level interaction, and we saw that using a more sensitive test, we had some evidence of a useful interaction. And we had also looked at the interaction or the profile plot, and we saw that the relationship did not appear to be the same of, uh, sorry, the relationship between protein source did not appear to be the same between high and low levels of protein. So what we want to do now, going back to our notes, is use Tukey's on a significant difference. So this is Tukey's confidence intervals to compare the treatments. So my question to you is why should we use Tukey's intervals instead of just using t-tests like we learned in chapter 10? And this is saying instead of, say, Fisher's intervals, like we learned previously in this chapter. Well, remember, if we were to just do an individual T interval or individual Fisher intervals for each possible comparison, then each of those intervals would have 95% confidence. And so the more and more and more comparisons we do, the more and more and more confidence intervals we build, 
the lower our overall confidence will end up being. So if I build one 95% confidence interval, that's fine. But if I build a bunch of individual 95% confidence intervals, when I compare all of them together, my overall confidence in all of those intervals at the same time is going to be much lower than 95%. If I use two keys intervals, however, when I look at all of those intervals together, my confidence will still be 95%. So I'm going to be using multiple t-tests or multiple intervals. In this case, 15. Because I can compare beef with low protein versus beef with high protein. And I could also compare beef with low protein versus pork with low protein and beef with low versus pork with high and then beef with low versus cereal with low and beef with low versus cereal with high and so on and so forth. There are 15 possible confidence intervals that I could build. That's going to massively increase my type 1 error rate. And, so, and correspondingly, very much decrease my confidence level in all of those intervals. So we don't want to do that. Instead, we'll use Tukey's adjustment. to control the type 1 error rate and confidence level, sorry, this should say and confidence level for the overall set of 15 comparisons to 0 0.05 and 95%. But that means each test has higher p-values and each test or each interval is wider than we would have had using regular t-tests and regular t-intervals. So we're going to use this LS means differences to keys HSD. To get this output, we're going to go back to our output and jump. I'm going to look at this output here. Oop, sorry, I forgot I've got to scroll. So I'm going to scroll over here because I'm going to be comparing each of these six possible groups. I've got beef low, beef high, cereal low, cereal high, pork low, pork high. So these are the six means I'm going to compare and I want to get all possible comparisons out of them. So I go over to the interaction output and I go to the red arrow menu for it. And what do you know? I see LS means two key HSD. I do not want to use students T because that's going to give me too high of a uh, significance level, it's going to give me too low of confidence. So I'm going to use LS means two key AHSD and that's going to give me a whole bunch of weird confidence intervals and I don't want to see that. So I'm going to pick the red arrow menu next to this output here. So next to the LS means two key HSD. So this red arrow menu here. And then I'm going to say give me the ordered differences report. This really should be the default output because this is the output that we saw when we did the one way ANOVA. So here we see going from the biggest to the smallest effect. So the biggest difference between those two means was for the beef high and the pork low, and that gave us a difference of 21.3 grams of weight gained. So rats that had the beef high protein diet versus rats that had the pork low protein diet gained on average 21.3 grams more. We have the standard error for the difference, and the standard error for the difference for all these groups is the same because the sample size is the same of 10 rats in each group. And the standard, or excuse me, the confidence interval, the two key interval for this group, or for these, this difference, beef high minus pork low, is 1.9 up to 40.65. The p-value for this difference is 0 0.023. All of this is presented in the notes. So for 95% intervals, so this is 95% overall confidence 
or alpha of 0 0.05 overall significance, we've got 15 possible confidence intervals to investigate. Each interval is telling us what are range, what's the range of value for the plausible effect. So what is the plausible true difference or true mean difference in weight gain for rats on these two diets? Notice how wide these intervals are. The true mean difference for, or excuse me, the estimated mean difference in our sample was 21.3 grams for beef high and pork low. The standard error is not that large. The reason why this is so big, this interval is so wide, is because we are estimating 15 intervals. And to control the overall level for 15 intervals, we have to have very, very wide intervals. So, in, to control the overall confidence level at 95%. We are willing to believe that the true mean difference for beef high versus pork low is no smaller than 1.9 grams and is no larger than 40.65 grams. Could this be a big effect? We're willing to believe it could be a huge effect of 40.6 grams, but we're also willing to believe that it's not a very large effect of all, at all of only about two grams. The largest effects are here between beef and pork at the different uh, levels of protein. Remember, one gram is about one paper clip. Down here, we see very small effects between cereal uh, diet and low and high protein. Why is this an interesting one to sig single, single out? Well, if we remember our interaction plot from last class, that is this comparison. So we had beef, cereal, and pork. We had high and low protein. This is the comparison being made there is not that big of a difference on average between rats that had high or low levels of protein even if they had a cereal diet. So if we take all of this together for protein and beef diets for protein and beef diets there is very strong evidence that higher protein diets cause more weight gain in rats than lower protein. diets. Now, a couple things I want to ask you. Why can I say that these diets cause more weight gain? Yeah, I can say cause because this was an experiment. We did random assignment of these treatments to the participants. So the rats were randomly assigned to all of these different treatments and so any differences are just due to the diets. We have eliminated confounding. And because we have uh, strong evidence, the only, we've eliminated chance. So the only thing that remains is cause. So cause comes from the random assignment. This comes because we eliminated confounding. The next thing I want to say, how come I can talk about high versus low protein for beef and pork? Well, that is because of these four comparisons. They only deal with beef and pork diets, and we always see high on the 
uh, positive side and low on the negative side. So we have beef high versus pork low, beef high versus beef low, pork high versus pork low, pork high versus beef low, and in that order of subtraction we always have a positive difference. So high beef or pork versus low beef or pork always gives us a large positive effect. And all those effects give us confidence intervals, uh, two key corrected intervals, that are greater than zero. So we have big effects that are greater than zero when correcting for uh, all these 15 intervals, and small corrected p-values. So we have very strong evidence So that is how I would look at these two key corrected intervals. They're going to be a lot wider and the more intervals you build, the wider those intervals are going to become. You're introducing more uncertainty just because you've got more groups that you're accounting for. I hope this gives you a, a glimpse into how we account for these multiple tests and these multiple comparisons. We really want to make sure that we're doing something like this. There are other methods besides Tukey uh, that we might look into uh, that will help us do these multiple comparisons, but we really want to be mindful that the more and more and more tests we do in a given context, the more and more and more our type 1 error will go up and the more our confidence level will decrease. So we want to account for that or control for that in some way. And if we don't control for that in some way, we should at least discuss it and why we didn't control for it in our results.